我们的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人民的人
for us, his sovereignness is the life and soul of Tibetan people. Uh, for Buddhists around the world, he is the manifestation of Buddha of compassion, Bodhisattva, Avalokiteshvara. Uh, for human rights and democracy also, he is the conscience, he is the spirit, you know. Uh, he is the pillar uh, for, you know, more progressive, you know, uh, and more free world. And uh, for the last 60 plus years, he has traveled all over the world, advocating for Tibetans, of course, but also for compassion and kindness to be a good human being, you know. If you're a good human being, he says, you will live a happy life, and you will have a happy family, you will have a happy society in the region, in the country, in the world. He believes that if you are a teacher, if you are a compassionate teacher, you become a better teacher. Students learn better from you. If you are a business person with empathy and compassion in you, you know, you will help your workers, employers, the employees, as well as grow in business, you know. Even if you are, you know, then you will be less corrupt. If you are a political leader, if you have compassion and kindness, when compassion and kindness with the element of action, with courage, huh? if you have that, you become a better leader, you know. You work for the people, you know, not live off the people. So that has been his message, and uh, we see in you, uh, and you said on Tibet TV too, you know, following the Solanist message, and message of all the great, you know, uh, prophets and great uh, teachers, you know, and for you to speak up for Tibetans, for Uyghurs, for uh, you know, uh, Taiwanese and Hong Kongers is very rare. And we have seen in the last 60 years of Tibetan people, Often we have seen people choosing money over morals. Including in our own country. Why we lost our country is few people picked money over morals over their own country. And to see someone speaking up for morals, for principle, for democracy in the true sense of the word, for human rights, is very rare. So we truly see you as a hero who speak for the people who are fighting for justice. And we've been speaking for the last 60 years with the loudest voice, but our volume is little low. With NBA as a star, your volume, you can magnify the voice. You know? That's what you have done. So you have brought this light at the end of the tunnel, for which we really appreciate you. Know? So, When you were at Portland, you know, we talked briefly. So when I invited you here, you willingly accepted, you know. And uh, we are very, very happy and honored, really honored, to have a friend like you, to have a voice like you, and someone who can speak for us and for justice and for freedom. So that's what we want. So with that, I want to welcome you here and thank you. And at the end, we'll say freedom three times. And Pei Yalo one time. Pei Yalo means victory to Tibet, right? So, freedom. 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 Pei Yalo. Thank you. so much emotions because you know I do work with a lot of communities but Tibetan community is definitely one of the most you know kind uh, lovable passion uh, you know good hospitality people that I've ever met you know I uh, more often just check my you know Instagram and all the messages you guys are uh, sending me it's really you know it, it really touches my heart I try to answer them as much as I can. I try to share them as much as I can so people, uh, not just in America, but all around the world can see what kind of, you know, uh, people are, Tibetans are. You know, I 
I'm going to give you guys a little story. I remember, you know, I was born in Switzerland, but I'm from Turkey. And I came to America when I was uh, 17 years old, back in 2009. And I remember after I came, one of my friends, you know, in uh, America was a Buddhist. And, you know, till then I have, you know, in my whole life in Turkey, I've never met uh, a Buddhist uh, before. But it was the first time I was you know, introduced to this culture, to religion, to, you know, these people. And uh, more often I sit down and have a conversation with him. He was always trying to explain to me about, uh, you know, his holiness, about the culture, about the food, about, you know, the people in Tibet. And I was very inspired. So that was the first time I heard about you guys and I heard about, you know, his uh, holiness. And I started to follow, you know, obviously his holiness on social media. Because I was a teenager and the best way to, you know, follow someone, use social media. And his messages was really inspired and really touched my heart. I was, you know, reading about his, you know, his story, his life, and uh, what Tibetan people were going through. It really, you know, touched my heart. And all the messages I have seen, it was all about, you know, unity, compassion, love, uh, love, kindness. And the, the one message is. We can be from, you know, different religions, different cultures, and different colors, but the most important thing in life is live our differences on the table and try to find what we have in common. You know, the one message was, one key word was together. How can we make this world better together? So, I remember this summer, I sit down, and I wanted to study. You know, I wanted to study about what people are going through. Uh, you know, what you know, Uyghurs are going through, what Hong Kongers are going through, what you know, Tibetans and Taiwanese are people uh, going through. And I was really ashamed of myself because I was like, last 10 years I played in NBA. Why did, I, why did I not speak about these issues before? You know, I was really ashamed. And I was like, I'm going to change this. I'm going to do anything I can to be the voice of all those innocent people out there around the world who don't have a voice, you know. And I remember, you know, having a conversation with uh, some of my people, uh, some of my friends, and they're like, don't do it. Don't do it because it can cost you everything. It can cost you your career, basketball, MBA, maybe even your life, you know. And I was like, listen, you know, I'm not scared of anything by I got and I remember telling them what people are going through you know is more important and more you know bigger than myself it's bigger than basketball bigger than NBA and if I don't stand up for those people then it will go everything I ever stand against you know to me morals principles and values are way more important than money endorsement deals, contracts, or anything that they can offer me. And I remember first game I was playing against New York Knicks, and um, I put a statement out there about how Tibet should be free, and how amazing the Tibetan uh, peoples are. And even in one hour, I started to get pressure from many people. And I remember right before the game, I put my shoes on. It was saying free Tibet. And went out there and played. I remember two uh, gentlemen from the from, from the basketball league that came to me and said, take those shoes off. I turned around to them, asked them why. And they told me that you know the, the NBA didn't get a lot of pressure about my shoes and I was like am I violating any rules or am I breaking any rules that NBA has by wearing the shoes they said no and I told them I'm getting ready for my citizenship test there are 27 amendments in America and the first amendment is freedom of speech and I told them you cannot take that away from me and um, they said this might get very ugly I was like, I don't care if you guys find me or ban me. Go tell your boss that I'm not going to take the shoes off. Um, you know, because
but the reason is I remember when I was nine years old, I was a little kid, my mom told me that stand up for what's right, even if it means sacrificing everything, you know? And I wanted to be the voice of all those innocent people out there, not just in America or Turkey, my home country, Turkey, but all around the world, you know? And obviously after that, we did get a lot of pressure, but the joy and the warmness that that had in my heart, I wouldn't change it to anything, you know? But uh, because that's what the message is, that's what His Holiness teaching all of us. Be brave, unite people, trying to bring love, peace, and compassion to, into this world, and at the same time, encourage everyone to stand up for what's right. And I remember after that, that night, my teammates started to ask me questions. You know, people around the NBA or other athletes, not just in basketball, but around the, around the other major sports leagues, started to ask me questions about, what is Tibetan going through? Tell us. And I sit down, a conversation with them. Okay, this is what where Tibet is. This is what people are going through. This is, you know, His Holiness's message is. And the um, response I got from them was so inspiring. But the lastly, I'm going to say because I'm really excited about the food, so I don't want to talk too much. <laughs> I don't want to talk too much, but I think you guys are an amazing community. And everywhere I go, you know, every place I go, you know, Portland, here, or many other uh, cities around around America, it just every one I seen was just one of the nicest and kindest people I've ever met. So much, they always have show so much respect and so much love and kind. And um, I think and I hope, not just you know me, but like people around the world can see. And one day, the, what kind of uh, people you guys are, and I hope the people can understand this message because we are having so much problem in our century right now because of people are not fo following His Holiness's message. If every religion, if every culture, if every country, right, if every community, every city, everyone, every individual follow His message the world can be a way better place, you know? So, I want to say thank you. Uh, we have a game on the 13th. I hope you guys are Celtics fans. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So I just want to say thank you guys for inviting me here. Again, I'm really honored and humbled to be here. Actually, my childhood dream, I was actually talking to my uh, friends about it to actually meet His Holiness one day. Oh! And I hope, you know, I hope online or maybe face to face one day I can, you know, achieve this dream because that was one of my biggest dreams. So uh, thank you guys again for inviting me and I hope that, uh, I hope to see you guys at one of my games. So. Yeah! given to me by his solonist, you know. Means, you know I, I really preserved it well. So, um, you know, his solonist gave this to me, so I'm giving it to you. Uh, I'm going to go to the next one. 